Hello, welcome to MDX 102 Hierarchy Navigation. I guess I should have called this non-time hierarchy navigation since there are a number of functions that are specific to the time dimension and that's one of the reasons why you specify a time dimension anytime you can. But uh, I'll still talk here about navigating hierarchies and that includes user-defined hierarchical structures as well as just attribute hierarchies. So first thing I'll do is talk about member sets or member functions and set functions. That's mostly what you'll be using in order to navigate these hierarchies. You can see that member functions can return either null, nothing, or a single member. And set functions can obviously return a null and then they return a set. Now that set may have one member, it may have many members in it, but either way it looks like a set. So it seems strange sometimes you'll use a set function and you'll still only get a single member back, but that's not a member function at that point. It's still just a set function. Now these member and set functions actually have a lot of uses. In this video I'll be talking about them specifically with navigating hierarchical structures. But there is that whole time intelligence piece that I mentioned which in a sense is walking the, the hierarchy and moving across time but it, there's more to it than that. And there are also a lot of functions in here to filter out data, you know, look for existing data and some other features. But again I'll be focusing here specifically about hierarchy navigation. So the first function that I'll examine is the members function. And this simply displays the members at a particular level in a hierarchy. Now you'll notice the first example I have here is customer.customergeography.country.members. The way this works is the first reference here is the dimension name. So I'm talking about the customer dimension. The second reference, customer geography, is the multi-level hierarchy, the user hierarchy that I'm referencing. And that multi-level hierarchy has a level called country. And I am looking for the members, the country members, in that particular dimension uh, hierarchy. If you look to the right, here is what the hierarchy looks like. And you can see that at the country level there's Australia and then down here Canada, France, Germany, United Kingdom, United States. And in fact, that is the set then that is returned when I execute that particular function. Now below this, I have just customer.country.members. Again, I have the customer dimension. But now country, it is a level in my multi-level hierarchy, but it's also an attribute by itself. So in this case, it takes the attribute hierarchy and says members. And in there, you do have all the countries, just as you did previously, but you also have the all customers, which is at the top of that particular attribute hierarchy. In fact, any attribute hierarchy that you do by default, unless you've turned off the all level, will have all as the first member when it lists that out. So let's take a look at this actually inside of Visual Studio, or I'm sorry, SQL Server Management Studio. In SQL Server Management Studio, the first query that I have uses what you saw before as far as uh, in the first example, customer.customergeography.country.members. Now in all these queries, I've simply put the calendar year 2003 on the columns, so that won't change and don't worry too much about that. But in this first example, I will execute this particular query. And again, from this, because I'm at the customer geography hierarchy and I'm at the country level, I'm getting back just the members for that Australia, Canada, France, Germany, United Kingdom, United States. Now don't worry that the measure is the same for all these again, I'll, I'll fix that later. And if you've watched the video on the measure groups and dimensions, you understand why that's happening. Uh, of course you don't see where I'm specifying the, the measure yet, but again, I'll cover that in the next video. Now the second example, again, it uses customer but now just country, so this is the country attribute hierarchy. So the members are going to be all the countries, plus it's going to add the all level to the beginning of this. So if I run this and execute it, 
then you'll see the results uh, appear to be the same except of course it has added all customers to the top. So the next example I'll talk about is the parent function. Now the parent is pretty simple, it is the parent of the current member. Notice in this example I have customer.tasmania.parent. So in this case, if you look to the right here, Tasmania is a state province, or in this case a province, but it's called state-province, but it's a province of Australia. So when I ask for its parent, it simply goes up one level and looks at Australia. Now notice I've just said customer.tasmania.parent and it finds Australia. Down below I've said specifically I'm in the customer geography hierarchy, I want Tasmania.parent and that also of course gives me Australia. Now why is that? Well anytime you specify something like Tasmania it searches and apparently in this first example it first found it in the multi-level hierarchy. So this is equivalent to not specifying the, the hierarchy. Down below at the bottom, I specifically specify the state-province attribute. So now I'm in the attribute hierarchy, and its parent here is simply all customers. Remember, that's a flat hierarchy. It only has an all level and then all of the state provinces, regardless of what country they're in. So let's take a look at these queries inside of SQL Server Management Studio. So here I am in SQL Server Management Studio, and again, this first example is just Tasmania with no qualifier. I'm not specifying whether it's coming from the attribute hierarchy or a multi-level hierarchy. And I'm going to run this, and in this case, of course, it comes from that multi-level hierarchy. In the second example, and you can't always guarantee that will be the case, by the way. So you should always specify, that's one of the things I hope to stress in this, is that you should always explicitly specify what you want, where you want these values to come from. So in the second example I do specify I want the multi-level hierarchy called customer geography and so it will then find Tasmania anywhere in it. Now I could have specified even further and said customer geography dot state dash province dot Tasmania and, it, and that way if Tasmania had potentially existed multiple places at, uh, at various levels it would have known what I wanted. But uh, at this point, I will run this, of course, and continue to get the same value of Australia down here. Now, again, in this last example, I finally specify that I want just the state province attribute hierarchy. If you look to the right, the state-province attribute hierarchy, okay, I'm not in the multi-level, which is down here. I'm up here. Of course, it is, if we look at the members, it's just all, and then all of these state-provinces, regardless of where they are. So here, since I've already gone to Tasmania, it's in this list, and I ask for parent, it comes up, and the only parent it has is all customers. So let me select that, of course, and when I run this, you will now see all customers comes up as the uh, parent. Now there's one other thing to note with parent. What if you are already at the top, and then you ask for the parent, you actually got a null back. So here in the customer dimension, if I'm at the all customers level and ask for the dot parent, it will just return a null. And you can see that very easily here, the next query, I'm simply at the all customers level, I ask for the parent, and you will not get an error on this query, it will execute, but the results that come back, it's just the year 2003. And if you look at the messages for this, you will see that it does in fact consist of one row and one column, but that is the value 2003. So basically a single cell with that particular value in it. So that's kind of how the parent work. It simply goes up one level. If you try to go beyond where it can go, you just get a null value back. And there are ways to check for that, of course, and I'll do that in future videos when we start talking about some calculations and you're asking you're looking at a particular value and wonder what its percentage of its parent is. Well, obviously when you get to the top, there is no parent, you have a null, so how do you handle that in your calculation? Now the next function to talk about is one that you'll use a whole lot, and that is the children function. So notice in the first example, I have customer.customergeography.children. So I'm saying in the customer dimension, 
in the customer geography hierarchy give me the children. Well again to the right here this is the customer geography hierarchy and so when I go in the default value is all customers that's the very top of that hierarchy so when I ask for the children of that it goes down one level and gives me the children just of one level down so Australia Canada France Germany it's if that looks familiar to you if that looks like what we did with the members it, it is very similar there are multiple ways often to get the same results so in this case asking for the children of the customer geography I get Australia Canada France uh, and so on all the countries now notice the next example I'm still in the customer geography hierarchy but now I now specify Australia as a member so I want the children of Australia and you can see they're expanded here in the screenshot so that I get back New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania and Victoria so let's take a look at those inside of SQL Server Management Studio I'll scroll down here's the first example again customer.customergeography.children so when I execute this it will take the default member the all level and then go down to the children of that one level which is the country now in this next example I will specify the country Australia and ask for its children and when I do that of course I get the states uh, and provinces in this case just provinces of Australia so that is what the children function does and again you'll use that a whole lot because you'll find a particular value and then need to see one level below that now the next function to discuss is very similar to the children's function the descendants function but it has a couple of major differences one is I can now go down to any level uh, it's not just down one I can go down uh, to any level I want and also I can return values from multiple levels which I'll show you in just a moment take a look at this first example I have descendants again I'm in the customer geography hierarchy and I want to go down to the country level well this is very similar to what I just did with children I'm only going down one level but I'm specifying here I want to go to the country level so of course I just get a list of the countries back but now I'm going to run the exact same query except instead of saying the country level I'm going to go down to the city level so this actually goes down it passes country and state province and returns to me all of the cities regardless of the country or state province in which they are located it's just going to return all the cities at this point so let's take a look at these running inside of management studio so here's the first example again very simple here's the descendants function and I'm just saying the customer geography hierarchy and I want at the country level in that hierarchy and so when I do that of course and execute this I'll simply get back a list of the countries like you've seen before but now I want a list of the cities and when I execute this using the descendants function I get back a list of the cities and notice something about this it does start off with the Australian cities just because they're in that order but if I scroll down I will soon move into cities that are not uh, West Chicago and Joliet these are in the state of Illinois in the United States they're not in Australia so this is all cities uh, using that descendants function all cities regardless of where they're located sometimes obviously you'll need to do that as well you might need to fill a list a drop down list and let someone choose from that so you might have to ignore uh, any specific area and just grab basically the equivalent of the attribute at that point and um, just grab all of those details now the descendants function has a, another feature uh, well one that I just mentioned and that is that it can return actually multiple levels at once so you see in this first example I say that uh, I want Australia so that's where I'm starting that's my starting point it doesn't have to just be at the all level so I want to start at Australia and I want to go down to the city level so again that should by itself just get me all of the cities only in Australia 
However, I then can add a clause here, and there are actually multiple ones. You see the first example here is self before and after. The second one is just self. There's before by itself, there's after by itself, there's self and before, self and after, uh, probably before and after, I have to look, but it, it just a uh, combination. So when I say self before and after, notice again I'm starting with Australia and saying that I want all the cities. But then when I say self, that says to include Australia, include yourself in that. And then when I say that I want before, that's going to give me everything before cities uh, and yet after Australia. So basically everything in between Australia and cities. And then after is going to give me everything from cities on down to the end. So this, in effect, is going to give me everything from Australia on down. Okay, that's again just because I'm using the most expressive version of this that I can, self before and after. But notice I'll get Australia, and then I will get all state provinces because of the before, even though I go to the city, I say everything before, so it's going to be state provinces. Then I'll get all the cities, and then because of the after clause, I'll get all the postal codes and customers in those cities. So basically I'm going to get everything in Australia at this point. Now the second one, which is simpler, I simply said self. Notice again, I said that I want Australia and I want the cities, so I'm only going to get the cities in Australia. So at this point, and I, I think I misspoke before when I said self gives me Australia. Self gives me the cities. Before takes me from where I started to that level. After takes me from that level on down to the end. So let's take a look at this in Management Studio. So the first example again is using the descendants function. I'm starting at Australia. I am scrolling uh, down to city or going to that level and then I issue a self before and after. So let me execute this query and this will take a second here to load up. But notice I get Australia, then I get New South Wales, which is a state province. Then I start getting the cities and the zips within that. Next city and zip, and then I actually get a list of some customers in that particular city. And it goes on, and eventually I'll come back to other cities, such as Darlinghurst here. Uh, and uh, again, eventually I would get to other state provinces, so it would keep bouncing me up and down those different levels. So there's a lot of information here. So let's look at a simpler example, which is the second one. And that is, again, I'm going to Australia and starting at the city, but now I only want self. So if I use that, I'm only going to get the cities in this particular example. And when I execute that, there is a list of the cities. So just a different way of working with that. And again, there are multiple combinations of that self before and after. And there's a whole lot more to this. Uh, this is just a quick introduction to some navigation. You'll see a lot more of this as I go through future videos. I want you to get a feel for what you can do, and you're welcome to look up any of these others. Just like there's a descendants function, there's an ancestor function, which of course will let you head the opposite direction if you want. There's a cousin, just like you saw a parent, a child, or children. There's, there's, a, there's a cousin, and, and there's some other variations as well. There's a first child and last child. There's a first non-empty. You know, um, there's an all members that's listed here. The members function that I used returns all the members, not including calculated members. All members will return calculated members as well. There's siblings. You might know Australia. Well, its siblings are the other countries. United Kingdom, United States, and so on. So you can use the siblings function to find out the things, rather than its children or its parent, you can find the things at the same level. And so on. There are a lot more functions, and again, this is just a quick example and introduction to these. So in the next video, I'll spend more time, I'll talk about how do I change the measure, and there are different ways of doing it. And uh, we'll see some more in-depth queries, and I'll also be introducing some calculations. Thank you.